All right, bro. What's up, man? What's going on? Hey, man? what's going on, Dustin? Happy Friday. Happy Friday. And uh, obviously, I'm not in the office today. No, no. Where are where where are you streaming from? <laughs> not Applebee's this time. I mean, no, there may, no. There may be some. Uh, let's see, eggs and a bagel float across the, yeah. the camera. Yeah, it looks like you're in the kitchen over there. They got I'm, you. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we give them a little shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're basically in the kitchen. I said, would y'all please hide me while I shoot this podcast? So, yeah, we're, we're gonna so get we're, someone jumping yeah. in there. Yeah. <laughs> Special we're guest. In, uh, we're in uh, Denver, Colorado. We're at Union Station, which is a train station mm-hmm. uh, downtown, and waiting on our uh, our train ride to the airport, so that way we can fly home this evening. So, uh, oh, so back we're home, back from there. home. Yeah. What were were you uh, doing over there in the in the cold in the, yeah, in the wilderness? Yeah, in, in the in the rain. It was rain this week. <laughs> Uh, this week, um, yeah. So we came up to uh, Rupes headquarters, the Bigfoot Academy in Denver, Colorado, and uh, we uh, brought one of our detailers up here to um, their advanced training. I mean, advanced sanding and polishing class, and so um, a two-day training course. It was super exciting, super in-depth. Jason Rose uh, was the teacher. They had Prentice St. Clair, which they just hired on. Uh, I don't know if you remember him. But he's actually the one that I bring into my shop every year. And, okay. And uh, and and they uh, do some analysis and stuff. But yeah, so it was the it was a training there at their headquarters, man, and it was phenomenal. Ooh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So is that like something you sort of just sign up for, or did you do a little speaking there? Or? Yeah, so a little bit of both. Um, yeah, so it's absolutely something that you can sign up for. Um, we were okay. invited to come, um, and, uh, and and then of course I was invited to speak. So I got to uh, give Detail Bookie a little shout out there and talk a little bit of business <laughs> with the guys. So um, it, you know it went great. But yeah, so you can as a detailer, you can absolutely go to RupesUSA.com and they have their training schedule. Um, I didn't know that. I thought I was under the wrong impression. Um, somebody asked yeah. me the other day, "How do you get there?" And I said. Well, I think it's uh, you either have to be a distributor or invite only, but I was wrong. Detailers can absolutely pay to go. And let me yeah. tell you this. I mean, it, if you have the opportunity and it makes it schedule wise to go to this training event, it, any training event they put on there, go to it because it is first class. Tell me, like, what what sets it apart? What's what sort of that next level? Because again, I use Rupes um, tools, right? I'm yep. sure you use Rupes tools, right? The polishes are great. I, I would say they're the leaders in the industry. Um, yep. And now with this next level training, right? It's kind of like a whole different sort of side of the business. But it could be again, if if, it, if it's as good as their tools, you know, what I mean, I gotta I gotta get out there. Absolutely. So you know, when you think of a Rupes tool. You think of quality, you think of professionalism, you think of perfection, you think of like top tier, top of the line. And their facility, the Bigfoot Academy, their manufacturing plant, which is in the same building, mm-hmm. their training shop is all there together. And it's the same thing. So like wow. when you walk in the building, it's just like you're in awe at the wow. shop. I mean, so yeah. Jason Rose actually... Um, you know, built this shop, this training shop. It's a, it looks like a detail shop, but it looks like a detail shop you ain't never seen before. Like everything <laughs> is lights. I mean, you have a a, 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 um, a track that lowers down with all these adjustable lights for correct yeah. paint. There's probably 20 carts with, filled with polishers, another 20 carts filled with compounds and pads, yeah. um, a wash bay that would just blow most shops away. And you know what's crazy is imagine you go there and it doesn't hit that standard. You know what I mean? It's like almost you'd expect that, but it's oh, you almost would, like it blows you away. It, yeah, right. So you would expect it to be great, right? You'd expect yeah. it to be good, and yeah. they went great. Um, wow. And then that's not even the classroom. You go in the classroom, and there's all the old Rupes sanders from the 60s. You got these custom painted Rupes that's hanging on the wall where they do the competition yeah. at SEMA every year. It's probably 30 of those. And, you, and then you have their whole lineup, without everything that they manufacture at this plant on one wall. And then you look up and where the, where, uh, the teacher is, you have three TVs and, yeah. you know, and everybody's got their tables and rolling nice chairs and then uh, <laughs> breakfast and snacks and drinks yeah. and lunch catered in. What type of lunch are we talking? You know, it's lunchtime uh, for me pretty soon here. What kind of uh, are we look, talking just, uh, <laughs> Ribs, barbecue chicken, barbecue yeah. pork, wings, mashed potatoes, macaroni and cheese, yeah. corn on the cob. So they feed you well over there. Hey, they, they take but, the that, but that wasn't the best part. 
that was not the best part. You know okay. the best part? Yeah. The, the best part was the ice cream truck that pulled up after lunch. That really? sat there for an hour for you to go get your ice cream. This is not no ordinary. Are you guys ice training? Truck. Or are you guys eating over there? That's eating. crazy. <laughs> but look, so it wasn't just an ice cream truck. This is straight from the dairy, like the dairy yeah. farm where they pull the cow to milk. They make this ice cream there, and they serve. Yeah. They, they have a truck that brings this truck, brings ice cream to you, yeah. and you just get the fresh ice. And man, it's incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. So, I think we just make this a food show now. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> 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 no, man, it was excellent. So I just wanted you to know, like, I mean, the level. So we're talking about training, right? And, yeah. and Rupes is probably like what I would have to imagine top of the line, top tier training in it. And and all that stuff matters, right? The facility, yeah. the, the products, the tools, the, the, the food, like all of that plays a part into that look. And, uh, and they knocked it out of the park. That's awesome. No, I love yeah. it here. And the thing is, is like, trying to put into perspective because what those different tiers of training, right? Cause you can go to a, sh a convention, right? You can go to SDC, you can go to MTE and get training a little more hands off, right? Education. You yep. can go to a, a root you can go to an expel. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know what I mean? You can do some of these trainings that some of these larger shops have as well. And it's kind of just those different tiers, you know what I mean? And trying to figure out what fits best for your business. Well, there is. And, and I think tier goes with budget, right? You know, you, yeah. you kind of, like, I mean, this is my first time going to that, that facility. I mean, it, and and I don't know if it's necessarily taken me that long to get there, but it's taken me that long to get there. And yeah. so, like, you know, like doing things at your pace, at your budget, and not just not just doing the thing because, like, that's the thing to do, but, like, what makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So if you're new in the business, you know, speaking to our young detailers out there that are just getting started, you know, do they need to go pay however many thousands of dollars to make a trip like that right now? Probably not. Could yeah. they go jump into a, uh, a mid tier or lower tier training um, or even go work side by side with somebody in their market, you know, just to help them one on one yeah. learn some things? Absolutely. And, and I think that trainings need to be done when they're when they can be afforded to and they don't cause added stress on your business. But mm -hmm. I do believe in them and I think they're extremely important to uh, have a part of, of your business. Did the people that were training there know that they were also going to be able to, you know, have you as a speaker? You know what I mean? I think that's also a really cool element. No, yeah, they, they didn't. And I was very interactive in the class. I always make it a point to do that. I think that that sets, not that, not that uh, Jason Rose is uncomfortable in any way, but I think it helps the instructor when you have someone interacting in class. So I was yeah. very verbal through the class to make sure that, um that that it kind of set the tone and then also yeah they, they get the added perk of those kind of things um That's and cool. and there, there's a lot of very uh well-known people in that class and there was a like there, it wasn't an introductory class so you you have a lot of detailers that were um advanced detailers that that, that i've seen around uh a time or two and these guys were there to learn and i mean just the level of class the level of conversation all of that was top notch and and you know so so detailers thinking about trainings right you know mm -hmm. like you it's not always to what you learn from that event but all the yeah. conversations that are had at that event the relationships you build the questions you ask i mean so you know you may not know, need to know all things polishing right you may know of the majority of it but you go to a polishing class and you may learn one little thing that just changes your, you know, the whole, yeah. your whole thought process or changes the way that you do things uh, for the better, obviously. And so it's, it's really cool to experience these things. In terms of sort of like, can't give away their, their secrets or what's going on. What can you tell us of what you learned and what you did there? Oh yeah. 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 I, um, I, I think their, their information, like, you know, they don't try to hide it. I mean, you're able to take pictures and stuff like that. Um, yeah. One of the big things, and you know, I, this is this was really eye opening for myself and Dustin, which is our lead detailer. I brought him with us. Uh, I don't know. You if only I, hire people named Dustin over there, right? It's yeah, just, well, it's you know, <laughs> they have the they have the coolest name. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I hear that's already a plus people. one on the interview, right? Your name, Dustin. Oh, you're we're getting yeah, you started. Uh, you're in. You start. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, no. So, so one of the main takeaways uh, from this is, um, so with. With the paint on new vehicles getting thinner and thinner and thinner, mm -hmm. they are wanting people to do less and less work because the more heavy correction that you do, yeah. the more paint you're removing. So, okay. Rupes has done a lot of work to figure out 
um, what's the least aggressive way to correct something like that, to, to correct okay. new paint. Yeah. And causing the least amount of removal. And yeah. I'm fixing to blow your mind. Yeah. What they've come up with, and these are scientists. This is not like Bob and Joe back in the shop, my, my <laughs> shop, and like figuring things out. No, this is done professionally with microscopes. And, I, and I'm not yeah. kidding you. Like they, they tell oh, you I believe all it. Yeah. how they figured it out. Um, they have figured out that sanding, okay. uh, wet sanding, more actually more accurately, damp sanding, okay. is what they would rather people see people do yeah. um, than heavy cut camp compounds. Okay. Interesting. They think, yeah, they're saying the heavy cut compounds were building too much heat. Okay. We're removing too much uh, clear coat. Okay. And we're causing too much damage to these vehicles when we can take a 3,000 uh, pad, a 3,000 grit sanding pad, foam yeah. back sanding pad. Now, yeah. this is not to um, correct orange peel or, mm -hmm. um, you know, defects that are above the paint that we're trying to level out. This is okay. this is to correct marring and scratching that, okay. that we're trying to clean up and flatten the paint a bit. Okay. Um, to uh, just for better enhancement. So um, they're saying a 3000 pad and, and what's unbelievable until you see it in per person, it'll blow your mind. But watching the how much, how little a 3000 pad actually removes versus a heavy yeah. cut compound is mind blowing. Really? So yep. now is that a heavy cut compound on a, a on the dual action, you know, a, a, you uh, know, Rupe has 15? Yeah, on a on a coarse pad, uh, like yeah. a blue coarse or your wool, a heavy wool pad. Um, yeah. Yes. Or, or, but more more importantly, a rotary. Um, the rotaries gotcha. are building a lot of heat. Um, they're yeah. building a lot of heat. They're, it's kind of inconsistent results. Um, you can't. You can take a lot more than than you intend to take um, yeah. off of it. So they they're saying with sanding, you can get more consistent results, remove less material. And it's easier to finish behind. So when you, okay. you know, after you sand, you can go back to the DA. Actually, you can sand with your DA. You can put on your medium, your yellow wool, um, yeah. and and you know your yellow. Uh, what is it called? Gold polish and, and yeah, the yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll remove the three thousand uh, grit sand sand scratches. So and okay. there's a whole thing behind it, right? That was a whole day. We spent one day talking about this method. And and okay. then, so you talk in the classroom for a few hours. And you go out and there's cars everywhere in the shop mm -hmm. and there's and and everybody's got their polishers and then jason demos what you're going to do and then everybody goes to work so um so it's a big deal right they, they there's a big change going on in the industry right now and that's what they're wanting to see detailers that are doing a lot of paint correction go to so in terms of like your shop right i know you do a lot of boats right boats are going to get a lot more of that wet sanding going on than cars uh -huh. how do you sort of see yourself adjusting right going from hey correction to sanding is that something that you're going to make a big change into yes uh, me and dustin's yeah. already talked about it so uh, and it's really like our trade-in trucks um, okay. that we do for one dealership that we uh, are paid through correction on um, yeah and we're spending two and three uh we're, we're spending a day doing two or three passes of heavy cut yeah. and just a lot yeah. of abuse and pain. Um, when we could have just breezed through a 3,000 pad, breeze down with a 3,000 pad and cleaned them up and then leveled it off with a, you know, with a yellow uh, polish, a yellow wool, wow. and, yeah. and brought them back to life. So, yes, to answer your question, we absolutely see us making a change in our shop. We were already doing sanding, you know, yeah. sanding jobs, but, but we want to see that more on our automotive side. So for us, right, we try and keep it. You know the sustainability and, and and scalability of sanding and polishing is something i think is pretty interesting i know we're getting off topic right we're supposed to be talking yeah. about investing the best but i think it's really interesting again from the stuff you're bringing up um yeah, yeah. In terms of if you're just a, a small shop and it's just you maybe one other guy and you guys are doing heavy paint correction i think that's it sounds real sustainable i think it sounds really interesting um to put into your business model but in terms of someone that's got five ten you know 15 detailers out there and going through that training and going through that sort of aspect, what are you, what sort of your feedback that you got from them on that? Yeah, um, it, you know, it's a different business model, I think. You know, so we have a big shop, but we have sections of our shop that can focus on these things. But when okay. you talk about a production shop, or you talk about 10, 12, 15, 20 detailers, yeah. um, I think you have to make a shift towards that more enhancement, um, polish, light polish seal, um, mm -hmm. less um, technical detailing. Yeah. Um, but 
agriculture is a bigger market for that than there is for the other, right? Like there's exactly. more, yeah. more cars that just want to be shiny and clean than there are want to be show cars. And that's so, the, yeah, that's the beauty of our industry. You know what I mean? There's room for everybody. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter absolutely. if you're on a five mile radius, right? You can be that guy that's doing that on those super high end cars, but there's got to be a, an area to be able to be doing these one steps, right? These two steps and, and enhancing these vehicles without necessarily, the customer isn't looking for that crazy amount of, of work right. on their car. Without causing harm to their car too. Cause inevitably yeah. if you start removing too much clear coat, then it may not happen to anything right now, but a mm -hmm. year, two, three, four down the road and the paint starts to fail because yeah. we've been in and removed half the clear coat, which has the SPF protecting it, which has the um, sunlight inhibitors that, that protect the color once that starts to fail. And it's not like the owner can go pinpoint it back to 2023 where, you know, Joe Schmo's shop sanded half my clear coat off. Yeah. Like they don't <laughs> have that knowledge then. So yeah, that's so when you like, see it then you put on marketplace. That's that. And then it's time to sell. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> time to sell, you know? <laughs> so yeah. But so learned a lot. That was one of the bigger, I, I say, yeah, that was one of the bigger takeaways. You know yeah. what else I take away from trainings like this? It's yeah. like, as I'm looking at their facility, I'm going, why can Man. ours be like this? Like, why yeah. can't, you know, why is it my shop this clean? Why is it my yeah. shop this organized? Yeah. Um, and, and the answer is, like, it can. It can yeah. be. And you just have to value those things. You have to work on those things. And not only yeah. you as the owner, but anybody that interacts in that shop has to have that core value of, I want my stuff to be first class. And, yeah. and, I, and that was a big takeaway for me. I spent a lot of time looking around at what made them so uh, jaw-dropping, like what made their shop yeah. so pretty. And, you know, it's the cleanliness of it. It's the, there's not a lot of stuff. I mean, they didn't have shelves everywhere and thousands of things. So it was minimal. And, yeah. you know, they, they uh, and it was pretty. So That's awesome. That's awesome, man. Um, in terms of any other sort of, trainings like i know we started with rupez that's where you're at you, you get yeah. a lot there what, what's another training that you can sort of recommend or that you sort of see that would be comparable maybe you know what i mean to to that rupez in terms of man the event. there's so there's so many um uh, you know i have to give a shout out to igl uh training yeah. facility out in lexington kentucky they have trainings there all the time and it's yeah. top notch it's yeah. first class too i mean they do a great job they have their, uh, you know paint correction classes they have ceramic coating classes they have ages classes they have all kinds of stuff so if you're wanting to travel somewhere that would be a good one um, okay. and, and there's there's literally all kind of trainings. But I'm telling you, there are there are training, there are people that will come to you too. Yeah. And that's something that you know detailers need to think about because um working learning in your own shop or you know with your own stuff is there's a lot different than going to learn on somebody else's stuff. Because yeah. you may have all the right path polishes and tools and stuff at Rupes, but when you get home, you're like, man, I don't have half that stuff. So you're trying to do things that they were doing with ease. That's causing yeah. you a real headache. So I think it's important when you're learning at first to learn on your own stuff. Okay. Learn what you have. And then if you don't have what you need, go get it and, and kind of work your way to it. So, um, you know, I know that doesn't give you a direct answer outside of a couple you know, things, but yeah. the trainings in general, um, they need to be vetted out. You know, you need to, yeah. before you hire somebody to teach you, teach you how to do something, do a little homework. Find out what they do on a daily basis, you know. If they're um, if they're a librarian, but they just charged you two thousand dollars to come to the shop to teach you how to detail, <laughs> yeah, red, you know, there's red, red flag, flag there. there. Yeah. yeah, so so really do some, you know, vet them out and and make sure that it's a good fit. So I think the other part that's actually kind of interesting, it's like let's flip it, right? You're you're going these trainings, that's great, but I think we've got a lot of listeners that are phenomenal detailers that could provide training. Oh, absolutely. see what I'm saying. And that's where I think it's another thing that we could sort of bring up where, you know what I mean? There's, there's way better. There's some phenomenal, phenomenal detailers that maybe just don't have a large, you know what I mean? 10, 20, 50 employees, but they're phenomenal detailers that can go to some of these shops and elevate them. And I think that's something that's definitely worth talking about too. Oh, it is. And it's something that we've done at our shop numerous times is have a training yeah. there. Um, it's always, it, it boosts my guys' uh, morale when they get to yeah. have people in their shop and teach them how to do stuff. And so, I, yeah. If I could get someone to walk in the door and be like, hey, look, this is my work, this is what I'm doing, this is what I can bring, and I got, hey, you got a free day, I'll talk to your detailer, we'll work on a couple of cars. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would pay for that. 
You know what I mean? Absolutely. I just, but it, you know, <laughs> yeah. And, and that, and, and those things are doable. I mean, so if you're, if you're on that advanced level and you know, mm-hmm. you, you, you feel like you have value and you can bring that to someone else, I think you should. And, um, yeah. you know, bringing people into your shop, bringing people into your location, teaching them how to do things. There's one good thing about teaching is it makes you better because yeah. you're going to get asked that you're going to get asked the question why why do you do this why do you do that and it forces you to really think about the answer really think about um, think about why it is you do things you do not just that's just because that's the way I've always done you know and and we're so guilty of of having that answer well that's just the way I've always done it and instead of really understanding the why and that's what's important yeah absolutely. Um, what do you think of her training coming up? What else you got planned? For doing yeah, so training? yeah, we're training your event. Yeah, yeah, flying home today. Um, to we're gonna be uh, in, at home for a day and then going back to Detroit, Michigan, um, okay. which is a really cool event. Um, IGL's putting this event on, and it is at the SEMA Garage, uh, which is in Detroit, okay. Michigan, and it's literally what it sounds like. So, SEMA, the organization, they have yeah. a huge garage. And if you're a SEMA member, you can um, you can use this garage. So we are the first detail organization to use the garage at your disposal. Yeah. I think all you have to do is just plan it with them. Um, and so this training is going to be a paint corrections uh, training. I'll be speaking at it. I know Rupes is going to be there. Uh, IGO, obviously, since they're putting it on, they'll be there. Um, yeah. And there's a couple other ones participating. If I'm forgetting somebody, I'm sorry. I know there's a, a few of you guys, but, uh, but it's, it's going to be a big event. Right. Yeah. And so that that's, that's awesome. next. Yeah, that's next week. And then, uh, of course, SDC right around the corner. First week in yeah. June. So, so, yeah, man, so I'm thinking, I've got it pulled up. I'm looking at SDC. It looks interesting. Tell for those people on the fence. Right. Tell, tell us. You want to tell them a little bit? I know you're speaking there as well. You know, I, that's a little I bit bigger for, for people. Yep. I, I speak. I do. I teach two classes there on Friday and mm-hmm. uh, and i'll be there all day friday i'm actually traveling back to sdc friday night so i won't be there saturday um, okay the detail book you will be um okay. but it's it's a great event right it's a two-day event you can go in you got, it's two days worth of classes uh till noon and then the show opens from noon to like five where you walk the floor and it's all uh, exhibitors so set people yeah. like detail bookie igl system x um rupes flex all the manufacturers that are um that are there you'll be able to talk to them see new products see what they have to offer hold use things in person like you know hold the tools use the tools so it's a, like to me that's what makes it important to go to these things if you're if you're buying stuff you need to be at these places because you get to see use it feel it talk to the people that manufacture talk to the people yeah. that know all about it so and also sort of see what's new because i think at a lot of times we show you're going to see what's coming up and you're going to be like oh, hey I can, I can use that in my business right this is a little different i should use that you know what i mean i think yeah you know, well, that's, you get to compare that's, side by side. You're not on Amazon or not on their website. You know, like yeah. you get to see things side by side. You get to, you know, hold a touch and feel it kind of thing. And and then talking to these people, build their relationships. You know, as mm-hmm. a business owner, it's all about relationships, man. It's, you know, yeah. not everything. You know, it's rare that everything's perfect in a business. It's rare that, you know, cash flow is exactly where you want it. Um, uh, all the business, you know, usually it fluctuates, right? You got cash, yeah. but you have no business. You have the business, but you have no cash. You have, yeah. you know, and no business or cash. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> no uh, business or or have, and no time, right? Then the time. Yeah, Don't you go, have a million yeah. things going on or nothing going on. And so, like, you know, I think that being able to go to an event like this and make relationships and and when you do that then then if you need something that's a name of the face right so yeah if i need something unique so like you know some some favor i guess yeah and and they know because they've met you at sdc you've invested you went to it you know you mm-hmm. went and seen them they're so much more inclined to help you out with something like that than if yeah. you're just a number on the books yeah yeah, no, I agree 100%. That's that's really cool. And again, that's yeah. why I try and make a couple shows a year. You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's a thing where, yeah. man, it's balancing that time, you know? So invest, oh, investing in these shows, investing in these trainings, it's almost like it's it, it, it's a balancing act, man. It's pretty crazy. It is, and it has to make sense. You know, I see a lot of these same detailers at every show. And yeah. and I'll be honest with you, I feel like that's their problem. It's more of a hangout than it is uh, than them learning anything. And they're, and they're yeah. probably – spending money they don't have to now if they're just doing it for a social hour and that's what they enjoy yeah. then so be it i'm who am i to say that that's not how you should spend your money 
but yeah. as a detailer, right? As, as yeah. a detailer that's looking to manage your money and, you know, mm-hmm. you pick the one that makes the most sense or pick, the, pick yeah. the things that make the most sense that you'll get the most out of. And everything else, just look at the pictures. And, and you know what's crazy? I'll, I'll, you know, I went to SEMA and I went to MTE this year, right? So I think I gave way more from MTE than SEMA. You know, SEMA's just really? so big. So big. It's just yeah. so freaking big. You know what I, I mean? Agree. And I, again, very cool experience. You know what I mean? Nothing wrong with that. But it was almost like MTE is almost more personal, right? For a smaller it shop, is. you're building those relationships and you're doing that education. Um, yeah. So I think that's also an interesting take for, for depending on where you're at, sort of trying to decide what, look at the show schedule, figure out which one works best for you, you know, and, and really invest that time and that money into it. Yeah, I told a guy that uh, just getting into our industry this weekend and he was asking about shows and he asked about SEMA and I said, honestly, I said, I would not let SEMA be my first uh, <laughs> my first show because yeah. like, you're going to get overwhelmed. You're going to feel yeah. like, and then you're probably not going to want to go to another show for fear it would be like that. Did you go to that show. taco place right next to it on the corner? Ah, taco place. You, were you at SEMA? Yeah, 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 I was at SEMA, um, but I don't remember going to a taco place. Man, I went to that place every day in the morning before we went over there. You didn't see that little taco place in the corner? No, if you go this year, we'll have to beat up at the taco. Okay, bar. yeah, no, I got you, I got you on the tacos there, man. Man, I've been thinking no. of, that's the reason to go back. <laughs> so we came in early as an exhibitor. We had to come in early and get food set up and stuff like that yeah. and, and find parking and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I didn't get the chance to walk the show, like literally the last day. And uh, I had about 10 minutes to walk our, our one hall, but I, that's all I saw of the whole show. How funny is it on the last days of any of these shows, any of these trainings, everyone's so tired, yeah, right? It's the last mm-hmm. day, right? First day you got people, you're talking, you're oh, making there these there relationships. Is. Last day, they look like, oh, my God, they're just zombies you out there. Up. Well, and, and I feel that way right now. You probably see it in my eyes. I mean, the, yeah, the jet yeah, lag. We've been traveling. Work. Yeah, we've been traveling nonstop and, and, and love it and would take nothing for it. I mean, there's just so mm-hmm. much that, you, that we get out of this. But it, it gets tiring, you know, and, yeah. and this is our last day today. And, and you're like, yeah. you've done had a million of these conversations. You've done had, you know, you, you, like you build those relationships and it's fun and it's exciting. But uh but it'll be nice to get on the plane and get these headphones on and listen to some relaxing music and crash for a while. <laughs> no, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, I think we covered some good stuff with sort of the yeah. conferences, the trainings. What Did you have anything else you wanted to add or throw in there? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just want to uh, say, you know, as a detailer, like, don't, you know, like these trainings are and, and you need training. You need to understand how to do new things. And as you evolve as a business, I think you need to spend time in business training, not just mm-hmm. um, not just tool training. But don't discredit yourself either. When you learn things, as you're working with your hands, I'm a very hands-on person. Don't always think the grass is greener on the other side, and that person always knows more than you. Yeah. Validate your own discoveries. Um, when you're working with your hands and you're solving your own problems, put a little thought into why things happen. Put a little yeah. thought into and 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 Jason uh, uh, made a very good statement yesterday. And he, you know, don't don't try to change two things to solve one problem because you don't know which variable solve it. But when you're solving mm-hmm. problems on the fly, change one thing at a time and to figure out what it is that solves your problem. So don't feel like you just always need to be spend thousands of dollars training. Validate yeah. yourself. Take your time. If you have employees, spend your time training your employees as well and pass that knowledge along. That's what's going to make us great. Yes, spend some money, go to some trainings, get the technical side, get some business courses in. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, don't don't run yourself pro trying to get trained. You know, let that be the icing on the cake. And I'll jump on the opposite side because, again, I can I can accept my own faults there. You know, I've been so invested just in the business and our training and our you know what i mean doing everything in house right and yep. and that's 10 years of doing that and finally coming out of that rabbit hole and looking around and being like hey guess what i've got confidence in what we do but there's but, a lot of other opinions and stuff that can help make you even better you know and, and being yeah able, absolutely and that. yeah yeah no yeah and i just wanted to get yeah you're, you're spot on right and and then listen to somebody uh, so you're in the rabbit hole of decision making mm-hmm. and you're there um, when someone looks from the outside in, they can really see little things that might be very easy things to change that make you better um, yeah. and always be open to that. But yeah, I just, I, I like the thought of these guys there. They're always so, well, I got to get up there to this or that before I do this. But I think they discredit themselves a lot too. So just, you know, guys keep, keep going. Um, yeah. Pick the courses that are right for you. Vet the trainers, make sure that you're, you know, that you're really understanding 
what you're going to learn, what is that uh, itinerary? Look at the itinerary. If, if yeah. they don't have, you know, if they don't have a structured training, like here's what we do, here's what we're going to cover. I would be really alarmed just to see like, okay, how, you know, how am I going to learn exactly what all I want to learn for this amount of money? Yeah. Awesome. I had one yeah. other thing I was going to throw at you. I know we're, um, right. sort of, did you have a crazy day recently where it was just like, start here and there? Cause I don't know why, but I did. And I feel like you did too. Did okay, you have so, one where it was, <laughs> go ahead. No, tell you, all right. Say, all right. So what is my, a crazy day that what? Let me, let me go first and let me tell you. Okay. Just tell so me your crazy day. Yeah. See, like they, they in the life, right? They're like, Hey, uh-huh. they're jumping on the podcast at 1130. You know what I mean? Man, they've got it easy. He's over there having breakfast. Next yeah. 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 Out. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had one of just the days where I'm going to give you just a quick map in your head. Right. Okay. We've got all Libertyville, right. right. Which is our yeah. store. We have Northbrook yep. about a half hour away. And then in between there's Hallis hall where the bears practice. Right. Okay. Okay, so I just got to build that triangle for you before we start so you know where everything's at. Um, (laughs) Again, day starts at 7. Kids wake up, right? Breakfast, great. Everything, you know, in the morning's family time. (laughs) Yeah. 9 o'clock, we got renters moving into our house, our other house, which is right next to our Libertyville store. So I got to be there at 9 to sell an auger, right? Just a random thing, right? Sell an auger, 700 bucks in the pocket, like great way to start the day. You know what I mean? Yeah. From there, we got we got to go and drive all the way back to Northbrook because the ATM is empty, right? We own our own ATMs, so I have to stop at the uh-huh. bank. I get a little Chick Fil A breakfast, and I yeah. make my way all the way to Northbrook, fill up okay. the ATM. After the ATM, I drive over to Hallis Hall, right? Uh-huh. I got to go pick up the general manager's car, take it to Libertyville, wash it. As I'm washing it. I got to go back to I, um, uh, it's Idaho. That's the street that it's on the renter because I got my furnace yeah. guy going there. You see what I'm oh, saying? You see how the story's God. going? Yes. After that, I go yes. drop off the car at, at Hallett's, right? Uh-huh. Drive back to Libertyville, drop off the mobile unit. We had two motorcycles that had to get done. I don't have a car right now. I had to steal my mom's car, oh, right? And then I had to go drive at the end of the day to Justin Fields' house to go do an, uh, you know what I mean? I, on the big, on the big players, you got to be there. And then we knocked <laughs> out his cars. So it's just like, and then it's five thirty, and I finally get home, and then we're outside playing with monster trucks. And the little guy, right? He just turned five, wipes out on his bike. You know what I mean? Oh, and then, man. then we, then I fall asleep, and then I got to go watch a little Monsters Inc. Man. So, so that's just like a day, just back forth craziness. What you describe is every day of my life. <laughs> I know, right? It isn't. I just, I just have to put it in perspective of like, man, it's yeah. just. The, I mean, these it, hour, this thirty minutes is a good time for me, man. I like it. It just breaks everything down in the day. Me too. Me too. I mean, and, and leading up to it, you know how it is. You're, you're always trying to make arrangements to get there. To, um, <laughs> make sure we know what we're supposed to talk about. Make sure all, the, you know, if we're traveling, make sure we got internet. Yeah. Make sure we got a place where people aren't passing stakes over the camera and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, once you get here and get settled in, man, it's nice. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, yeah, every day, I mean, but I think that's the way I like it. You know, if I, if I, yeah. if I was so busy, I'd be fun. So, um, <laughs> now I don't know what any day to do. I'll put a little bit of thought in that. Maybe that'll be next week's show is what my last yeah. crazy day was. So, <laughs> we'll do like a little animation, awesome. like draw a map and follow us through the day, like a crazy <laughs> day that, yeah, that Nick and Dustin go through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get the steps in. But uh, that's right. Yeah, I just thought it would be a cool way to end the show, just sort of talking, talking about the day it, and the day in the life, man. You know, it's a good time. I love it. I love it. Look, great show as always. Um, <laughs> final notes, trainings. Um, yeah, we uh, we believe in them. Obviously, we go to a lot of yeah. them. There's a lot of good ones. If you ever uh, need suggestions, feel free to message over uh, to us. And um, yeah, man, it's been a great been a great week. And looking forward to another great one. Don't miss that train. Don't miss that train, Justin. Right. See you, fellas. Right, Appreciate brother. it. See ya. <laughs>